Ukraine will be able to destroy more targets inside Russia with U.S. weapons, the ban relaxed. The United States of America has allowed Ukraine to use American weapons to defeat any Russian forces attacking across the border, not just those near the Kharkiv region. Politico writes about this. At the same time, U.S. officials note that this is not a change in Washington's policy regarding the ban on strikes deep into Russia with weapons provided by the United States. Since the United States authorized strikes on targets near the border with the Kharkiv region, Ukrainian troops have used American weapons at least once to strike Russian territory. Then targets in the Belgorod region were destroyed, but Ukrainian and other European officials have pressed the United States to further loosen its restrictions, allowing Ukraine to strike targets anywhere in Russia. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said in an interview with PBS that the agreement with Ukraine on US strikes against Russia covers any place where Russian troops cross the border from the Russian side to the Ukrainian side to try to take more Ukrainian territory. It is not a matter of geography, it's a matter of common sense. If Russia attacks or is about to attack Ukraine from its territory, the only thing that makes sense is to allow Ukraine to repel the forces that are attacking it across the border, he said. Two American officials, speaking on condition of anonymity, stressed that allowing Ukraine to launch strikes on Russian territory in response to fire from anywhere on the border is not a change in White House policy. The move was initially considered only in the context of Russia's Kharkiv offensive, but does not rule out the possibility of strikes in response to other cross-border attacks, one of the officials said. It is not only the United States that has authorized strikes on targets on Russian territory using Western weapons. This decision was also supported by Germany. Chancellor Olaf Scholz stressed that Ukraine has the right to defend itself against attacks on its territory. Earlier, French President Emmanuel Macron supported the supply of long-range weapons to Ukraine for attacks on the Russian Federation. He also advocated allowing Ukraine to strike military targets on Russian territory from which the occupiers are attacking Ukrainian cities. In addition, permission to strike the Russian Federation with Western weapons was supported in Poland, the Czech Republic, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Great Britain, Denmark and a number of other countries. A conflict broke out between Britain and US over Ukraine's accession to NATO. UK and US authorities are at loggerheads over Ukraine's entry into NATO after US officials said its path to membership was not irreversible. According to The Telegraph, the United States is concerned about plans to give Ukraine new guarantees of NATO membership at the July summit in Washington and the UK supported the proposal of some European member countries to designate Ukraine's accession to NATO as irreversible in a joint statement. According to the US, the wording should be made more streamlined, indicating a well-lit bridge to membership without any deadlines. US officials defend that describing the path to joining NATO as irreversible would be unacceptable to some members, including Hungary. A diplomat from Central Europe said he was disappointed by the US's ambiguity and delay on Ukraine's membership. Some members support the idea of fast-tracking Ukraine's membership at a meeting in July, which would give Kyiv more assurance that it would eventually be protected by NATO's collective defense clause. Let us recall that at the NATO summit in Vilnius in 2023, member countries agreed that Ukraine's future is in NATO, but refused to set a deadline for its accession. At the time, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky called the vague membership proposal unprecedented and absurd. The publication noted that apparently this year's NATO summit will also not set any dates, but there will be new security guarantees for Ukraine. The meeting of leaders of the NATO member countries will be held in Washington on July the 9th to the 11th. At the end of April, Alliance Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg announced that he had invited Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to a meeting. Earlier, Deputy Prime Minister Olga Stefanyshina said that there are two main countries that are preventing accession to NATO from moving forward. According to her, we are talking about Germany and the USA. Russia will use nuclear weapons regardless of the West's armament of Ukraine. The Telegraph. Russia will use nuclear weapons regardless of whether the West arms Ukraine. 
International relations expert Samuel Ramani writes about this in his column for The Telegraph. He recalled that over the past few weeks, Western countries have given permission for Ukraine to use NATO-class weapons to strike targets on Russian territory. At the same time, the escalation of the West will not determine whether the ruler of the Russian Federation, Putin, presses the red button. Russia's stoking of the nuclear threat has provoked two opposing reactions in the West. The first is that Russia's nuclear threats should be easily dismissed. This argument is based on the claim that Russia knows that the use of nuclear weapons would lead to a large-scale conventional attack by NATO on its forces in Ukraine or a nuclear strike in response. On the other hand, Russia may be tempted to use nuclear weapons if NATO escalates too much, the author notes. In his opinion, both arguments are wrong. There are realistic scenarios in which Russia could use tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine or, less likely, against a NATO country. At the same time, Russia's decision will depend on the behavior of the West. Because Russia's nuclear logic is not inherently reactive, the West should not be afraid to give Ukraine the weapons and flexibility it needs to win the war. Allowing Russia to gain more territory and Putin to believe that NATO will capitulate in the face of a nuclear attack is the worst possible outcome for the West and Ukraine. The expert sums up. In May, former president of the Russian Federation and current deputy chairman of the Russian Security Council, Dmitry Medvedev, commented on the Russian nuclear exercises. According to him, Western leaders do not want to think logically in the context of the fact that assistance to Ukraine with manpower will entail the direct entry of their country into the war to which the aggressor country will have to respond. Medvedev scared the West with a world catastrophe and noted that Kennedy and Khrushchev were able to understand this more than 60 years ago, but those who have seized power in the West do not want to understand it today.